So you want to learn to fish, newcomer? I have much knowledge to share. Fishing is a state of being. To properly fish, you must become the water itself. Wait, bobbing gently until just the right. Oh, come on, you shrimp. Oh, come on, come to pop pop. Hey, daddy needs a new pair of shrimp. Hey, 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 hey. Let the fish come to you. Let your patience mold you into the rock of the bay becoming part of the ecosystem. Oh, you little bastards, you're mine. It's scampy time. Okay, well, I do think, oh, there we go. Oh, here we go. Okay, we're gonna be gone off the shrimp cocktails tonight. We're gonna be, we're gonna be five deep. We're gonna be five shrimp cocktails deep. Okay, do you not have any sense of patience? Fishing is not about catching the fish, but rather the time in between, where it's just you, your thoughts, and the sea. And if you play your cards right, and catch enough fish, you can start calling the sea your wife. Oh, cool. So just fish and let your mind go. Actually, I'm probably just gonna alt tab out while I fish. Wait, what? Yeah, I mean, I'll be getting most of these levels while I work or like cooking, doing errands, like just watching something. What, what do you mean? Um, okay, now it'll actually like blow your mind. So I'm not gonna get meta with you. Meta? See, see, you don't even know that. You, you know nothing, man, okay? Just know that I actually do live in a higher plane of consciousness, one that is more vast and mid than you could ever imagine. Mid? Oh my god, roll the intro. I'm making a new character on RuneScape, but not allowing myself access to the wiki or any informative plugins. The only wiki pages I can view will be five random ones. I will then have to encounter them in-game before I can generate a new one. Then lock the wiki one page at a time. I'm Scramp, and this is RuneScape. Wiki locked. On the last episode of Wiki Locked, we made it to 60 Agility, which would allow us to enter one entrance of the God Wars dungeon. I guess you all knew what was about to happen, which is immediately group murder. Uh, whatever God War that is happening in there for a moment was put on pause completely to gain up on me. They put aside their differences and found a common enemy, a level three shrimp that just wiggled his way into their underground battle. Turns into Goliath, 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 Goliath v. David. That sounds like a cursed law firm. Obviously, I die so quickly. So the plan is to eat some fish that can counteract the damage, because RuneScape, like no other game, except Cooking Mama, understands the power of food. Food is healing for communities, for the self, and for the soul. But RuneScape takes that very literally. Food actually heals you. The best way to recover from being stabbed in the chest is housing down a pizza. I would feel so much more comfortable in a hospital if the main treatments you were on was just an all-you-can-eat buffet. So the plan is to stock up on some fish, run in with a full inventory of it, and just hope that scarfing the fish down, like Joey Chestnut in an alternate reality where the Coney Island hot dog eating contest is instead the Boston Harbor Seafood Slam. But before I get into the Seafood Slam plan, it is worth it to try just one more time to see if I can get through. People say the definition of insanity is doing the same thing again and again, expecting different results. To that, I say, Wikipedia defines insanity as behaviors performed by certain abnormal mental or behavioral patterns. So I've been insane for a second, actually. But I will change up my strategy a bit, and I think this will help. So let's turn on the thick skin prayer and do this. Okay, well, thick skin doesn't work. I think the only damage that prayer can help you from is the emotional damage from meeting people online. So we go fishing. Video game fishing has spread like chum in water. It is everywhere now. RuneScape fishing is a job. It's a grind. These dumb shrimp are just gonna keep on coming while I'm alt tabbed out and browsing Wikipedia. Did you know that those surreal clickbait ads are called chum boxes? I did not. Once I fill up my inventory, I run to what I assume is the upstairs apartment of the family that runs the general store uh, to use their kitchen. Well, it's just a pot of water over fire. Of course I could use the lumber range if I complete Cook's Assistant, which is a very intro quest to the game where you bake a birthday cake for the king. But when I was doing the grind, I just didn't feel like it was necessary. Just not feeling celebrating the monarchy at the moment. It doesn't matter what kind of cooking device you use, you're gonna get the same cooked fish. So personally, I'm gonna be boiling the fish, which should not give you the same hit points as a nice seasoned grilled piece of fish, eh, but it does. Once we do a few rounds of the shrimp, we are able to graduate from the tiny fishing net to the big fishing 
Hole. I've taken my entire 826 coin cash stack, which is mostly made up of Rick Turpentine's misguided but appreciated reparations, and I blew it pretty much all on fishing equipment, like a fisherman moth summoned to the base pro shop obelisk. I stock up on some bait, but I also get a fly fishing rod and some feathers, because I will also have to wade into the river to catch some freshwater fish as well in the grind. My plan is to have salmon be my best healing option. We move on to sardines next at level 5. They are a great source of omega-5 fatty acids. I don't know how that correlates to hit points, but just keep that in mind, everyone. Like, I really wish I could just free up some inventory slots by making a big seafood pasta. Four fish could combine to make one pasta dish. Like, maybe it gives double the healing effect, doesn't, not proportional. But, maybe you could give four times the healing rate if you put some Parmesan on there. Level 10, we go for some herring. Uh, getting a new fish isn't too interesting here. I'm not looking for the forced glee every time your Animal Crossing villager gets a fish and tries out their Type 5, but, I mean, something. We go back and forth from the South Lumbridge Bay to the General Store Kitchen, just throwing our fish one by one into a progressively more rank pot of water. The only two types of cook you can get on meat and RuneScape is a perfect medium rare or burnt to a crisp. Like, use a recipe. Shrimps take this long to boil. Use a timer. Just in terms of food waste, I mean, everyone in Gildenior... Everyone in Gildenior... Gildenior is burning fully about half the fish they catch from the ocean. I get cooking can be hard, but our characters pretty quickly comprehend how to cast magic. No mistakes at all, but a consistent cook time on a herring is somehow unfathomable. Well, we're off to the river to go fly fishing. I know the optimal fly fishing spot is that hill by the barbarian village, but that genuinely feels like where the cool kids go to hang out and smoke cigarettes. And for some reason, I'm instead gravitated to the fish in the Lumbridge River by the goblin community. I spent so much time in this area when I first played RuneScape, doing things I am not proud of, killing a lot of goblins. I've returned matured with sorrow in my heart. Not here to fight, here to sit and fish. Just hang out with the goblins. Maybe get some good gossip, you know? The goblins are hooking up. Who isn't talking to who? That kind of stuff. Eventually, I do run out of feathers and I make a decision. I will begin to kill. I've already technically broken my pacifist lifestyle I was trying to do by auto-attacking the multiple muggers that have attacked me, even gaining an attack level. I should be also improving my defense level and hit points. That will for sure help me not immediately get beat up upon entering the dungeon. Well, I'm still gonna get beat up, but like, I'll get better at getting beat up. To stick with the bird theme, I'm gonna be training on chickens. I can use their feathers to fish, bury their bones to get some more prayer. Maybe I can evolve past thick skin and get something that will actually help. Question I'm curious about, which in this case is not an arena at all, but rather a farmer's fenced-in private property, and begin to kick the shit out of chickens. I use my Tutorial Island sword to begin to skewer the chickens, and looking back, I'm not proud of that. Those chickens never got a Tutorial Island to go to before they enter their world of adventure. They never begin with equipment and money. They're born into this world, and then I immediately kill them. It should be hand-to-hand -hand combat, hand-to-wing. But that's not what happened, and they'll only get more unfair later. The chicken itself, I'm leaving. That seems like it's incredibly wasteful, but that's not my fault. Chicken will never heal enough to help me in the game. Rudescape seafood game is too strong. Jagex is being lobbied by Big Lobster. Personally, I've ate leftover fried chicken past midnight, and it felt like I had the invincibility star from Mario, so I don't know, seems imbalanced and inaccurate to me. As I get some combat stats up and my defense up to six, this round of training has ended. I'm gonna get some steel armor and hope with the trap I have so far, I can run through the God Wars dungeon horde and get a glimpse at my beloved avian tees. So I crowdfund by stealing funds from the crowd in Lumbridge. I don't feel bad about pickpocketing in this game because the Federal Reserve of RuneScape is located in people's pockets, a literal pocket dimension of endless coins. Every time I reach to this man's pocket, there will be another three coins. That being said, I wish I could pickpocket this fancy lad. Tius Consentius. Okay, he's got family blood money. Why can't I pickpocket him? I know maybe not now, but I'd grind to at least 80 thieving to be able to steal some money from his monocle fund. Talk to him, and he pretty much only wants to talk about the achievement diary for which he is a taskmaster. He has all this money and uses it to force people into his silly little tasks. Some of us make our own tasks, okay? We don't need you. I next get up to the level where I can start to pickpocket farmers, and I return to my favorite poultry thunderdome to do it. That poor farmer. I've kicked hundreds of his chickens, walk back in, 
and then just start ripping money out of his pocket. But luckily for him, I realized this method may not be the best way. Just getting all steel armor will cost quite a bit, and there's a faster way. The Stronghold of Security. The Stronghold of Security is a beginner dungeon, where doors ask you multiple choice questions about account security, and give you some minor cash along the way. At the end, giving you 10,000 coins. You do not have to fight a soul, just stick it through what feels a little bit like a middle school internet PSA. I think it's a great idea to spread awareness. Hey, my old account was hacked. Does it make it not? Funny that the central concept of this badass and dangerous looking dungeon is a PSA. All right, this is it. The tomb is behind there. All the treasure we wish. Well, that's not too bad. I mean, that snake in the previous room almost got a bite of me, but. Ah! Too bad. Watch this informative sketch. Hello, Brian. Hello, Cassidy. Really cool party. I know. I'm so wasted. Me and a couple other skeletons are going to go exploring the ancient ruins down the street. Maybe get some cool treasure? I don't know. Isn't that very important to a culture that's not ours? Well, yes, but think about the money. Wait, is this show about us? I make it through, get that 10,000 gold and some colorful fancy boots, and it's time to begin our shopping spree. Almost like a gift shop for the Strongholds of Security is the helm shop right outside. So we get a steel helm, then onto Falador for a shield. The store was out of stock on a few servers for steel kite shields, and then on some where it was available, it wouldn't let me buy them because of my Iron Man status. So unfortunately, the best I could get was an iron square shield. Got some steel legs and Alcarid, run up to Varrock, for a steel body. Ran us around 2,600 coins, not too bad. And look at us. Yeah, that looks like a noob, but a stylish one nonetheless. And it's time for attempt three. Third time's the charm. We will accomplish our first goal. Check off that first page. Let's go! We pretty much immediately died. Uh, steel armor, not enough. So it is with a heavy heart that I return to the Thunderdome sponsored by Tyson and throw down some more chickens. Now with a steel scimitar and full set of armor, which is complete overkill, as I don't believe a chicken has ever once hit me for any point of damage. At least this time a better purpose appears. I meet a new friend, Ruka. The very first person in, in game who approaches me has watched my videos. They're here to collect 10,000 feathers to make some arrows, and at this point, the amount I've collected training vastly surpasses what I will need to fish, so they can go to a better use, weaponry for someone else. They collect way more than I can, but it's good to help someone else's grind that isn't a suicidal fool's errand. Shout out to you, Ruka. May your arrows always find purchase. We've done some fishing in the meantime, just using a bit of the feathers. Not too much to report on. Oh, except I do have some goblin gossip, okay? Crank is talking to Bone Slam, but Bone Slam and David kissed at a holiday feast one night, but David made a promise to Rockjaw to be brothers in arms, which isn't inherently sexual from what I've heard, but it does depend. And all this time, Arrow Breath, Glug Dug, Sarah F, and Throat Ripper are all in a polycule with Crank. Just wild stuff. Then eventually we finish our grind as well with level 20 defense. Go back on our shopping spree route, now are in full Mithril. G again, still not much, but we're not looking for much. Just enough. I really hope this can be it because the money I got from sitting through that security timeshare speech, I don't think can cover much adamant armor. And there's no adamant plate body in the stores. I don't know how you get one of those. So we make our way again into the God Wars dungeon. Now we don't just have thick skin. Thanks to the sacred bones of the chickens we've sacrificed, we have rock skin. So we enter, and immediately take that beating, but it, but it's not strong enough to bring us down. Okay, no, we can do this, we can continue. Just gonna keep slamming down fish, is that, is that them? There they, there they are, there's the birds, there they are. They're not happy to see us, they're not happy to see us, but there they, oh my God. Okay, we did it, we did it, we saw a bird, we did it. After training with 534 chickens, I am strong enough to witness the avian teens. Page accomplished. Wiki locks homemade RuneScape wiki. Page one, avian teas. Avian teas are big ass birds who have somehow found themselves living in an underground war zone. They are incredibly hostile and will throw spears at you, even if five other avian teas are also throwing spears at you and you are dead. Even just to view them, the journey is tough. Either run on city rooftops hundreds of times or hit the gym big time. Mithril armor is necessary to survive for even seconds in their enclosure. One should practice self-defense on over at least 500 defenseless free-range chickens. They are pious, god-fearing birds. 
worshipping specifically Armando. I don't know much about this deity, and I was not able to have much of a conversation with them about their faith because of the aforementioned spearing to death. I hope one day I'll be strong enough to learn more about this great species. But for now, this will have to suffice as my first entry. So it is time to re-roll. All right, let's see what we got. Temporary skill boost slash magic. Okay, so getting a temporary magic boost. Seeing the magic cape first and foremost is a huge jump scare. Um, but no, actually, I think I can just complete this. I just need to get one of these magic boosts. I think we can just go to Valdor and get a refreshing pint of Wizard's Mind Bomb. Now, this is a nice change of pace. We can get two pages back to back. I'll take my armor off and put on my beekeeper smock in case I spill a bit of my drink. And that's the Wizard Mind Bomb and Temporary Magic Skill Boost completed. Page two of Wikilock's homemade wiki. Temporary Skill Boost slash magic. Oh, it says it's sponsored content? You want nice cold beer? A beer so cold it opens your mind to the arcane wonder all around you? Try the wizard's mind bomb. Cold as the Rockies, and lightning is meditating on top of the Rockies. One wizard mind bomb will have your third eye wide open. At the Valdor Inn, for the price of three coins, you can watch the atoms that make up the universe shift as you gain a greater understanding of magic. Wizard mind bomb. Now also comes in a hard seltzer. I guess we're rolling again. All right, let's see. We got a... It's a Tsar Mage. I've never done the Inferno or the Fire Cape thing. Is that also the Inferno or is that the, that's the, that's the Fire Cape? That's the Fire Cape? That's, what's the name of that? For a second, I thought this would require me to do that, but I think this is just a single monster I'd have to kill. Well, the article claims it's a monster, but they are also apparently the leader of the Tsar people. So, geez, I guess. Chances ask me to do a political assassination? Ooh. Combat level is 103, so maybe this will go on the back burner. We return to our other possible tasks. There's Lovakenji Ore that will take 65 mining in favor, Mycelium Pool that requires going to Fossil Island and then operating it, Portal Nexus which needs 70 plus construction, and then the Create Part which has so so many quests and skill requirements. Mycelium Pool apparently should be the easiest out there, that's what people have been saying. What makes it complicated is that it requires a lot of trial and error on my part from like figuring out which quests give me kudos without the wiki, completing said quest, completing the dig site, even answering the History Museum questions without the Runelight plugin sounds a little complicated, whereas 65 Mining, hey, that's just some clicking. And I got some editing to do, so yo, hi-ho, off to grind we go. Hi-ho, hi-ho. On the next episode of Wikilocked, alrighty, time for a pretty simple grind. No new huge yearly game mode should be releasing right now or anything. Oh no, it's right behind me, isn't it? The cliche where I say the thing and then the thing is behind me. Is there a large PNG picture of the new league season behind me? Right on.